My name is Sonic Clover. Uh, first, let's just start with uh, what's going to happen here today. Uh, I'll start with a little bit of an introduction on the team and, and such. Um, then I'll enter of why do we want to be doing anything with modules, uh, what's our vision for it, what's our ultimate goal, and all that. Uh, then we'll sort of get into the uh, bolts and nuts of it, of, of what actually we're, we're going to do in, in the short and long term. And in part three, we'll, we'll look at the short term fruits, which is basically what is happening in Inferno. And then uh, a short discussion on, uh, on uh, the future. So this is the team at this uh, working on, uh, on this feature. Um, and just to give maybe a brief more in introduction to myself, I haven't been involved with the EVE project for five years now. I started at CCP in 1999, but I've been for the last five, five years working on World of Darkness, but recently returned to, to EVE. So, Let's just start with the uh, theory uh, discussion of, of uh, why this is something that, that we are interested in, in doing. And uh, uh, this slide is not happening as it should be. It should come at one bullet point at a time, but OK. We'll just go through it anyway. So. Uh, um, the three main sources of inspiration from Eve, uh, Elite and Ultima online, are, are ones that people probably know, know about and, and see, see very clearly what the uh, influence is, but maybe the influence of or inspiration from Magic the Gathering is, is the, the collectible card game is, is less, less uh, clear, but the fitting system is, is the is uh, basically based on or, or inspired by, by Magic the Gathering, where, where ships are like decks and, and modules are individual cards. Of course, it's not clear cut. Of course, uh, it's different media and all that. Um, so in Magic the Gathering, they, of course, release new cards on a regular basis to keep the game fresh. And this basically was the original intent for EVE, but uh, we sort of never maybe really went through with it fully. Um, and uh, what we want to look at now is if, uh, if it's something that we can go back to, if we can sort of make that root vision bloom again. Um, so, of course, as you know, flying in your ship, your ship is basically the vehicle to most of the gameplay you do in the game. Uh, not all, of course, if you're an industrialist or, a, or doing something social or, or political, uh, but for most other activities, that's the, the vehicle that you use for it. And, and so any changes to it uh, uh, will, will have a great ramifications for, for every player. So. Um, we've mainly sort of combated the, 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 the stagnation which we, which we don't want to happen by adding new shapes every now and then and, and some new module work and, and so on. But uh, the key thing here is that um, in a sense sort of looking at it in hindsight, the, the golden age of um, new modules and, and similar uh, is, can be said to be from 2003 to 2006. Their most expansions were mostly driven by um, new ships, new uh, modules and, and such. But at that time, uh, we sort of, in 2006, we sort of gradually started to, as CCP grew in size and, 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 and the resources, uh, um, we became more uh, it became easier for us to work on, on bigger features. And uh, it can be said maybe that we sort of lost ourselves in that a little bit 
uh, with, which culminated last year with, with everything that happened then. And, uh, and now it's maybe time to, to go back to, to uh, some of the core issues or core things that, that, that make EVE so great. And that's what we are looking into right now. Um, ooh, now it's coming one at a time. That's good. So <clears throat> this, to, to combat this stagnation, the, the key thing there is, is what I like to call shaking the ant farm. And uh, um, if, if, we, if we say the ant farm is a, is a, is a metaphor for uh, sort of the tactical landscape in the game, then uh, um, uh, with time, as players explore the tactical landscape more and more, it, it becomes more and more um, firm and, and known. And in time, if we don't shake this tactical landscape, um, it becomes completely um, stagnated, basically. And, and what we want to do is look into how can we shake this a little bit um, to, to sort of keep the exploration of this tactical landscape a continuous part of the game, rather than just um, something that is done once and then never changes again. Um, we, we're not looking to completely overhaul everything and make, you know, uh, white, black and, and left, right or anything like that. Um, we are... Um, uh, we, we do believe that, that uh, we don't have to go for a drastic module changes to, to uh, shake the tactical landscape. Um, we, we also want to uh, define the, the tactics and counter tactics in the game very clearly. Um, this, this is basically in a good place already. I mean, we, we have... We, we, we have many tactical elements like electronic warfare and cap warfare and, and uh, um, different weapon types and all of these, these things. Um, but we want to, uh, we want to uh, get them into, into sort of a rhythmic metagame shift. By that I, I mean that, let's say, um, I have a module A that is an offensive module of some sorts, and then we have a module B that is a counter to that module. Uh, if players start to use module A a lot, um, that uh, is then an incentive for people to start to fit module B more uh, to counter that. And at a certain point, there sort of is a, a tipping point where uh, using module A no longer is so viable because so many people are, are using the countermeasures to it. And, uh, and then the use of, of module A lessens, and then that drives the module B also to be less used. Uh, because, as you well know, um, slot relay state is expensive and you don't want to be fitting something that is not doing good most of the time. And, and, at, at, and then at some point, using, starting to use module A again becomes a, uh, a uh, viable option. So, so that's sort of the, the, the rhythmic metagame system that, that we are looking into, and, and this can uh, have uh, a lot of... Um, uh, strong uh, benefits for those who are able to read these uh, metagame shifts the best, both on a tactical level, of course, but also on an economic level. And, and if they are managed to sort of uh, read it beforehand, they, they can uh, reap massive benefits, both strategic and, and economic. Uh, and <clears throat> because uh, what, what will happen is, is that uh, modules start to have a relative value. In, in, a, in a stagnant tactical environment, uh, modules will have a fixed value because everyone will know exactly how good or bad it is. But in a uh, fluid metagame, um, that will not be the case. And, and uh, uh, something that was great six months ago may be not so great today and vice versa. And, and uh, both... Um, uh, you know, fighters and, and industrialists would, would have to try to uh, uh, adapt to, to, to that. Um, there are, of course, a few things to, to uh, what's out here for. Uh, one is flavor of the month, basically, where, where if we 
tr try to make these changes happen too fast. That means that uh, uh, players are constantly chasing the flavor of the month, which by itself is not terrible, but it's pretty bad in EVE because of the skill system we have. Um, you are uh, uh, very locked in for, for a large chunk of, of time of what you can and cannot do. And uh, if you spend months training for a part particular tactic, you don't want to suddenly find that tactic completely useless. Um, and so on. So these shifts have to, have to uh, happen slowly. Uh, too much setup variance is also uh, not great. Um, by that I mean uh, we want to make sure that the, the, uh, the ship roles continue to be fairly fixed. That, that, even, that, that you know, if, if you meet a, a scorpion, you can be fairly certain that some, some sort of electronic warfare is going to happen. But, you know, not that you find a scorpion that happens to be a massive drone boat or whatever, you know. It's, 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 we have to make sure that whatever changes we are making uh, are, are not too drastic on that side also. Um, I also want to address a little bit the question of ultimate balance. By that I mean, by, by that I mean uh, um, uh, where we, we balance the system to, to something where we can basically just walk away from it and say, yeah, this is this balance. We've now balanced the game perfectly, and we can now just, you know, never think about it again. Um, that ultimate balance is fine for some games, but for a uh, uh, evolving MMO, it's not really something that you can go for because it will just become stale and boring uh, after a while. And uh, another important factor, which means that ultimate balance is a myth, is that uh, we don't want to and we really can't enforce fairness. Um, regardless of how you know, meticulously we have uh, tweaked the numbers to be, so, so every module and every ship is com perfectly balanced. We can never make sure that somebody doesn't gain advantage by just showing up with more people or with, you know, better ships or whatever. So, um, this vision that we want to go for is not about ultimate balance. Of course, balance work is involved, but that is, is only part of, of, of what we're doing, and we're not really trying to achieve ultimate balance there. So, next slide. The tactical metagame, um, just a few more points on, on uh, further points on that. Uh, yeah, just re-emphasizing re that we're not going to completely overhaul you know, weapon types or defensive or logistics or anything like that. We're just mainly looking into, um, you know, the small tactical variances that, that we can achieve, which, which uh, can give, give these small edges or, or disadvantages based on, on your fittings. Um, and of course, uh, uh, you know, I just want to emphasize that, that despite the 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 stagnation that, that is a little bit the, the, the uh, fact today. Uh, this has not always been the case. There are many cases in, in uh, Eve's history where uh, we saw drastic things happen, usually because CCP did something wrong, you know, some, uh, released something really unbalanced. Uh, but also just if, when they released something uh, major in, in, in these areas. Um, you know, nobody can expect that if he builds an, an Uber ship today to be able to, for that ship necessarily to be an Uber ship two, two years down the line. Um, just like nobody's flying a, a, a ship that was Uber uh, seven years ago or, or, or whatever. Um, so, we, we also want to explore a little bit uh, powerful effects with powerful counters because that can create interesting metagame uh, variations and, you know, just doing something really powerful is just fun, so why not 
try to have a little bit of that. Um, but we have to make sure that, that we mix this with consistency because if we only focus on powerful effects and powerful counters, we will end up with a very uh, limited rock, paper, scissor system where, you know, rock will always beat paper and, 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 and so on. So, uh, uh, but if we, if we add consistency to the mix, it means that uh, the choice for the player becomes um, sort of choosing between do I want to go for something really powerful which can make me, you know, trust somebody completely but makes me also limited or uh, do I want to, to go for something more consistent, consistently good. Um, and, you know, just want to emphasize again that, that we are not promising that a given tactic or setup will always work 100% the same. The, um, uh, sure, it, it's, it's not great that a battle can be decided before um, the, the, the first shot is fired based on the, the fittings of the participants, but um, but uh, it, it, it is a, a sort of a necessarily evil to, to, uh, to, keep, the, keep, to keep the tactical landscape fresh. And, uh, but of course we have to make sure that not every battle is decided that way. So, uh, before leaving the theory section, I want to uh, sort of quickly go through a few um, sort of grander things that, that touch upon more than just the, uh, the module work, but because um, the roadmap or vision that, that we are laying out for the modules have to take those uh, facts into, into account. And we'll start with the perpetual machine. Um, this basically, you know, should be familiar to, to most players. You harvest stuff, you use that stuff to manufacture something, and then you that stuff gets destroyed fighting over more resources. That's the idea, at least. And um, this is sort of the core of, of, of allowing Eve to, to sort of chuck along for, for all eternity, so to speak, if, if, if all is, is going well. And, uh, um, but the, but, uh, we have to be very mindful that these three pillars uh, are relatively balanced and, uh, uh, and that uh, if one of these pillars is start to be unbalanced, it will, it will sort of clog the, the whole machine. If, for instance, um, not enough things are being destroyed, that will, you know, lessen demand and that means you know, fewer people are manufacturing, and that means lower demand for resources and so on. So it, it can become a, a vicious cycle that, that we want to avoid. And um, we have to be very careful about um, how this, uh, the state of this machine, because there can a, lo a lot of sort of artificial things can hide problems with it. For instance, a, const a constant influx of new players will drive up demand, but it's sort of an artificial demand because uh, the moment uh, the influx of new players stops, uh, that artificial demand, demand will disappear and the underlying problems will uh, show, show through. But this basic system is, is why we can say that EVE has no end game, because this is a cyclical machine, it, 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 uh, it goes in cycles, it's not a, it's not a linear uh, machine. So, uh, and, and we basically want to make, do the same for modules, that, that there's a cyclical uh, uh, life to them. Um, and how this regards to module work is that we should make, try to make modules that encourage conflict and, and thus spur, spur economic activity. Um, just a few other things I, I want to mention as sort of things that we are looking into trying to uh, improve. Uh, this, of course, is not something that we can or want to stop entirely. I mean, it should always be favorable to, to, 
be well organized and, and have a lot of uh, friends. Um, but uh, we, we definitely don't want that to be too powerful because that undermines the whole tactical landscape. I mean, if me just bringing, you know, thousand people will always counter more than, counter more than you know, what shapes or fittings people are using. It just makes the uh, tactical landscape of, of modules meaningless. Um, so here I'm um, sort of basically claiming that this is something that needs to improve. Um, people can probably disagree to that, but this at least is my opinion that, that we should try to increase interactivity and it should not just be a question of showing up and activating everything on whatever your FC tells you to and, uh, you know, no, uh, that there is nothing more than that to it. Um, and finally, uh, a thing that, that we also want to try to improve is, is module variations. Currently, uh, meta levels have been very limited in how they in basically how they're set up. They, they basically only become, are more powerful versions of the lower meta levels. They, you know, are either, either have more powerful effects or lower uh, cap use or, or whatever. So, but, so currently the, the only question when you're thinking of a particular module group to fit, the only question now is, A, do I have a, a, a good meta level to use here and B, Am I willing to, you know, risk that, that module? But we want to add C, where does that meta-level module um, fit the strategy that I'm going for? Uh, and finally, I want to mention the, the three creeps, which we have to be very mindful of when we are um, doing, when we start to add new modules and stuff like that into the game on a regular basis. Uh, the first is uh, the power creep. Um, this should be very familiar, familiar to, to, you know, to you from most other MMOs, where um, you know things just get more and more powerful, and, and it basically makes earlier stuff um, useless. We don't want that uh, complexity creep, uh, but just adding stuff to the game, regardless of, even if it's very simple, it's just more stuff to, to learn about. And finally, number creep. It's just more things to keep track of, and, and uh, uh, eventually, if numbers become high enough, it, trying to figure out some, some tactical fitting, it just becomes so chaotic and so much noise, basically, that, that you just throw something together and hope for the best. Um, so, uh, this is something that, that we are uh, uh, definitely looking into uh, uh, trying to keep in check and a sort of underlying problem or issue here is that um, EVE of course is, is uh, now in its ninth year and uh, for all old games it becomes increasingly tricky to make sure that uh, we keep veteran players happy, but also keep the game accessible to new players. Um, you can look at, you know, uh, games like EverQuest 1, which uh, is older than, than EVE, you know, it's, it's uh, in its uh, uh, 13th year right now, I think. And they've added a lot of stuff to the game and managed to keep the sort of core audience happy. There are still a fair number of people playing that game. But the game has become so complex and so basically, and, and, and the power creep so massive that, um, that it's just almost impossible to start that game from scratch. And we don't want that to happen to Eve. We want to continue to cater to the existing player base, of course, but not to the extent where the game becomes inaccessible, inaccessible to, to new people. So, a lot of talking, just want to summarize this very quickly. Um, we want to like really after the game with uh, module changes and additions. Uh, create a fluid tactical metagame where uh, module value is, is uh, 
relative instead of fixed. Uh, we want Compa to become more fun and engaging. And we want to develop things slowly and deliberately because this is such an important part of the game that, that we don't want to screw it over. I mean, we, we can sort of get away with launching a feature that, that um, turns out to be not so good because people can then just ignore it and not use it. But if we start to screw around with the core things of, of the daily experience of most players, um, we don't have that luxury. So, part two, what, what actually are we doing? And so we, we took all these, all these ideas and all these notions and all these concepts for what we wanted to achieve and started by just looking at what what is the situation right now? You know, how, how are the module groups faring? What, what, which modules are good, which modules are not good, which modules are broken, and, and, and so on. And for this, uh, this is an, an, an ongoing project. It's, it's not something we are going to finish um, in, 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 a, in a few weeks, it's going to take us a few months to sort of just nail down exactly how things are and, and create a roadmap fr from that. Um, and, but for this first release, the Inferno release, we, we still wanted to sort of show that something was going on. And so we decided to do a vertical slice sort of of, of things that, that, that we are looking into. Uh, not do a complete overhaul of anything, but more of just sort of a little bit of, of most things. Uh, and this helps us in, in identifying, you know, how, how fast can we churn this stuff out? How, you know, how long is the development process? And, and uh, is there some toolwork required? And, and, and all this stuff. Um, a big part of what we'll be doing is, is just collecting data and ideas. And, and here we have been uh, very careful with, with trying to sort of uh, get input from as many as possible. Uh, and part of it is, is using the, the in-house data collecting uh, methods that we have, which, which uh, I'm glad to say we, were, uh, we are Im improving massively right now, uh, which is very good and about time, some would say. Um, but also just brainstorming and, and idea gathering from, from any, everybody. Um, I, I uh, had a forum thread in, in the ideas sections, and it's up to, I don't know, 40 pages or something, or 30 something, and uh, a lot of good stuff in there. and, and and from a lot of people, and, and I've basically gathered uh, massive Excel sheets full of, of ideas and, and possibilities. Um, but all this work can be broken down into two main avenues. It's uh, fixing existing stuff and adding new stuff. Uh, on the fixing existing stuff front, um, it's underperforming modules and module groups. Here I'm thinking about stuff like cap batteries and passive targeting and ECCM and stuff like that. Technically broken modules like Defender missiles and, and such. Uh, unbalanced module variations, these are basically, there are some cases of there not being a good enough balance between the meta levels and some meta level, not necessarily the highest one, being just clearly better than the rest. And general balance work, which, which usually then results in results from uh, us having done something wrong. Um, on the adding new stuff front, um, we want to fill in missing module tactical gaps. That means, you know, sort of identify what tactics and counter tactics are there in there right now and, and where is sort of missing gaps in that. For instance, not all the weapon types have damage amplifiers. Um, missing meta levels, this is 
not a critical issue, but something that we should look into fixing and then with the diversity and flexibility in mind, instead of just making a more powerful version. Uh, add tactical variations. These are basically new ways to do things that we could do before, but just do it a little bit differently. Um, new tactical dimensions is then something completely new that you couldn't do before. Um, new roles, this of course will mostly happen through ships as in the past, but we definitely want to try to rope module work in there also. And support for their existing roles and, and uh, clarify them and, and, and all those things. Um, so, what is happening in Inferno? Uh, as I said, we're doing a, a, a vertical slice, a quick discla disclaimer first off. Uh, this, of course, is still something that is being worked on, so take everything with a little bit of a grain of salt. Um, but uh, maybe another disclaimer is, is uh, oh yeah, there's, I think, one more here. Names are just placeholder names, but uh, another disclaimer not listed here is, is um, uh, is that when I talk when I, I'm talking about modules mostly, but of course, this applies to other items as well: uh, rigs, drones, deployables, ammo, stuff like that. So um, basically everything except ships. Um, so if we start with the new modules that, that we are working on right now, first is uh, a tactical warp. This would be an example of a tactical variation. Um, People can already through probes and, and uh, cloaked scouts um, do similar things, but this is basically a non-targeted, uh, very fast warp. It is almost in instantaneous, um, just directly forward facing. The use case for this is mostly to help you get engaged. It's, it's not thought of as an escape mechanism. I'm not saying it can never be used as an escape mechanism, but that's not the main use case, and, and we want to use the spooler, high reactivation time, and the, the fact that it can't be stopped by warp scramblers and, and, uh, and uh, bubbles. Um, so, to, to sort of count, counter it. Um, we're also adding one more disruption field. Um, this bubble has a very large radius, but it only starts, stops the tactical warp. Uh, but the other deployables will also stop the, the, the warp. So this is just sort of an extra option on that. Um, I mentioned that some weapon types didn't have damage amplifiers. Drones are one example of it. Hello, oh, that was fun. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. That's, uh, there's a lot of stuff that we want to do with drones. This is sort of just the first step there. Uh, this is a mouthful of a name, but basically what it does is that uh, this is an act act activatable module that um, gives you a base resistance bonus that starts out as equal uh, over the line, almost the damage types, but it cycles on each cycle, which currently is like 10 seconds, but of don't you know, take all the numbers with a grain of salt. Um, it basically calculates based on in the damage it had received and shifts the resistances based on that. So if you've been receiving a lot of kinetic damage, then your kinetic resistance is going to go up. But it's a zero-sum system, so the others will go down correspondingly. Um, Fuel shield booster, this is basically a shield booster that gives a, a nice shield boost, but uh, has a high cap use. But um, you can choose whether you want to fuel it from the capacitor or from a charge in the cargo hold. And this is also sort of a design space that we are exploring that we, that we can do a lot with, but we sort of just want to start with this and, and see where it takes us. Uh, finally, uh, target breaker. Uh, this is basically, you, you activate this and it can break targets on you, uh, but 
the chance of that happening is based on how many people are targeting you. If, if there are only one or two people, there's a very low chance of this working, but if there are like 20 people targeting you, you have a very good chance of basically breaking target on all of them. And this is sort of an exploration in, into, uh, into um, uh, fleet, affecting fleet fights and trying to you know, spread the tactical decisions around. Uh, we're making a couple of edits to existing modules. First, we're giving a little bit of love to, to cap batteries. Uh, they now also act as counters to noses and newts. Uh, this is this is a stack. Uh, this has a stacking penalty, but uh, there is a chance if somebody uses a nose or a newt on you that uh, it will he will act, it will actually reflect back back on him. And uh, we we just to make sure we we don't want to make this so powerful that it upsets the balance of cap warfare as it stands right now. Uh, but we want to add this as an extra option, which then opens the door for us to do something more with for nurses and newts in the future. Um, just the, 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 as I talked about earlier, the, 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 counter, the tactics and counter tactics and, and the arms race that goes on between those. Uh, the other is uh, tracking disruptors. We want to make them a little bit more universally effective against more weapon types. <laughs> yeah, so they affect missiles now also. Um, then a couple of new rigs. Uh, one is actually just a, uh, based on, on something that exists already. We have the ionic field projector, which increases max targeting, targeting range. Uh, but we want to give, make a, an extreme version of that, basically. Uh, this would only be small, uh, but would give, uh, I think the ionic field projector gives something like plus 25% right now. We would be like tripling that or something like that. And, you know, the use case is basically frigate snipers, you know, looking at how, how that pans out. Um, but this is another design space that we want to explore a little bit, which is the concept of uh, extreme rigs, which are basically rigs that give massive bonuses, but also have massive penalties, and see how, how um, those function. The other new rig is uh, increasing CPU output. Again, the numbers there are, are placeholder numbers, but this is how it exists right now on, on our test servers. Uh, these would be both Tech 1 and Tech 2 versions for small, medium, and large size. And yeah, this, this is just uh, uh, our exploration into um, expanding a little bit the fitting uh, options for, for players. Um, finally, a couple of new drones. Uh, first is actually just a, a version of an existing drone. And uh, yeah, we, we already have the, the heavy version, but here we're getting a lighter medium version, of course, with, with uh, reduced stats. Uh, and the other is uh, a salvage drone. <laughs> and uh, the thinking here, uh, or, or this is basically the, the concept we're going for right now, that, that can't automate them, you have to always target them one to one rack at a time, and they always have to return to dump their, their stuff into to you. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to steal the thunder from Art a little bit and showing you the concept they have for the Salvage Drone. This is looking pretty sweet. Um, they're showing it also in their Art panel, I think, but they're showing a lot of stuff, so they won't mind me showing one thing. Uh, one final slide I wanted to uh, uh, do here is, uh, is on the seating of this new stuff. We've sort of been a little bit sloppy about on, on this in the past um, and just thrown them on, on, the, on the market. But um, I want to sort of expand the, the, the horizon there. Uh, so unless it's based on, on an existing or, or very similar item, uh, we're never going to use the NPC market. 
Um, it also means that there are going to be no PPOs for these items. Um, again, there are exceptions, but this applies for most of them. And we're sort of looking into different ways of, of seeding stuff into the game. Um, we're probably not going to use all of these uh, methods right in, in, in question, in, in Inferno, sorry. But um, we want to sort of start spreading this around and, and make the acquisition of, of the PPCs more of a, a gameplay uh, element. And uh, so just sort of a quick blurb on, on, uh, on the future. We, of course, um, have a huge list of stuff to, to uh, go through. Uh, I'm not going to list any of them here because I don't want to make false promises on, on anything, anything that might happen. Uh, there's a lot of good ideas that have been compiled from, from uh, many, many uh, sources. And, uh, uh, and uh, step one, of course, is compiling all this stuff. Step two is harvesting it and filtering it and prioritizing it. And, and that is an ongoing wo uh, uh, work, but I would, uh, I, I definitely intend to, to, to use the CSM and, and hopefully the players also in, in helping out with that. And, and uh, because, you know, we, we, we're not creating this in, in isolation. We, we have to be working on this with um, the current status of the game and wishes of the players in mind. Um, yeah, so fin one final point here about themed expansions or seasons, which is sort of a, a dream to, that, that we can hopefully achieve sometimes in the near future. Um, I'm going to actually talk a little bit about, about similar things. Uh, I talked about the three creeps earlier, the power creep, the number creep, and the complexity creep. And uh, we're, we're sort of toying around with, with a few ideas of how we can deal with this. Uh, in the long run, um, and one idea we were toying with is, is facing basically modules in and out of existence. This can be done in several different ways. Uh, there can be a soft transitions, like PPC uh, dro stop and drop, or hard transitions, which are definitely, of course, more uh, more forceful, but also sort of more, more clear cut. We're sort of just exploring what, what we can do here, and just to make sure this is only applies to new stuff that we're doing, this, uh, or new modules that we're doing. This does not affect existing stuff at all. Uh, we're never going to take away items that you, that you already have. Um, so, yeah, I was talking about the, the, the seating earlier. Uh, this sort of ties into, into why we are exploring the seating. It's, it's to give us this control of, of what is available and what not. So, and that sort of uh, dovetails nicely with the themed expansions I was talking about. So we can have a, you know, the winter of cap warfare or, or what not, just based on, on what we are uh, focusing on in that given, given season or period. And, uh, but again, the, the roadmap for all of this is, is still in uh, being created. So. I can't show you the finalized list of of of, uh, of, of what we what we exactly what we're going to do, but uh, I think it's, it's, we just wanted to sort of give you a a quick snapshot of of uh, what's going on. Um, so yeah, just want to remind you that the roundtable for modules is today at five o'clock. Uh, so until then, you can. I don't know, spend your time watching the Eve keynote or some boring stuff like that. Uh, but uh, I think we have time for some Q&A. What's the time, by the way? OK, so we have maybe a time for a, for a few questions. I think that's, yep, that's all. So thank you.